Hey guys, I'm up on my roof again and this time I'm sitting beside a solar tube. So when we retrofitted the house, we redid all of the insulation and we put in a bunch of these solar tubes to daylight the house. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about solar tubes, why you might use them and some of the drawbacks that I've noticed with them. So that if you go about and use one yourself, you will avoid all the mistakes that we made. So when we retrofitted the house, we completely re-insulated it. We took it from R7 in the walls to R30. We, we re-insulated the attic to about R100. And we noticed a huge difference um, just by doing that. We also put new windows in. We went to triple glazed windows. Um, and then we put a bunch of these solar tubes in because generally speaking, I'm not a huge fan of <clears throat> the, um, the skylights. <clears throat> so. Um, the reason I don't like skylights is they generally leak like inevitably at some point in their life They're gonna leak and so You're better off to go with a system that's not gonna have any kind of moisture issues And so these are known for being very reliable from that perspective So we put these suckers in and they were pretty new on the market when we put them in I mean they've, they've some version of them have been around for a while, but these particular ones were fairly new and we've actually put eight of them into our house. So let's see if I can get them uh, a pan of these things. So there's another one here beside the solar collector. Right there. And then we put them in over here as well. And then you can see them in the background there. And it's totally changed the dynamic of our house. <clears throat> our house is, especially the upper levels, are totally lit differently than they've ever been. I mean, people go to our bathroom now because one of the the solar tubes is in the in the the washroom, and they can never figure out how to turn the light off. So it's definitely saved electricity, and because of the type of glazing on them, it actually allows UV light into the space itself. So that's good for our skin. That's good for vitamin D and all of that stuff. There is a few things that are kind of annoying about these things though that I wanted to talk a little bit about. And I think new versions of them are not suffering from these consequences anymore. I think they've learned their lesson. So number one, these little um, aluminum reflectors increase the amount of light that the solar tube gets, <clears throat> which is great, but it's pretty windy here in Calgary. And so um, when the wind is blowing, it's actually super noisy. These things make a lot of noise and um, I hate noise. So it kind of bugs me. The other thing too is that the actual solar light itself um, is made with this polycarbonate glazing and there's also another polycarbonate dome of the same type on the inside of the house as well, which is great. So it's got two layers of glazing, but if you look down in the tube there, it's probably not a bit of reflection, but these giant tubes have um, lots of, like the diameter is really wide. I believe they're 12 or 16 inches in diameter. And so um, when it gets really cold up here, we end up getting this incredible um, thermal siphon or thermal loop going on. So as the, the warm air from the house, the, the, the dome on the bottom warms the air up in the tube, it rises it um, warms up the top lens, it, it then cools because it gets cold outside and so we end up getting this huge heat transfer between the house. So here we are spending all this money to upgrade our house and make it more energy efficient and yet the tubes themselves don't have thermal brakes. So that was a mistake on my behalf um, that I should have looked into before we ordered these things. Um, lesson learned though and um, I think that there is a retrofit. Now there's two other things. So you can put a, an acrylic lens in there. So some of them I think are being sold with acrylic lenses in the middle, which would stop some of that thermal siphoning from going on inside. But the actual tube itself is made out of uh, steel or aluminum. And that's a, an incredible conductor. So you actually want to think about that as well. I mean, that there should be a thermal break in the actual tube itself uh, because that's actually going to conduct a lot of energy as well. So just a couple of things to think about if you're thinking about getting these tubes. Um, look to see if it's got a thermal break. Look to see if it's got an acrylic lens in the middle. So that'll be three um, 
pieces of glass that it has to go through or glazing. Um, otherwise, I really like them. I like how it's daylit our house. It's definitely improved my sanity, uh, having sunlight in the upstairs all the time. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to learn more about this, check us out on vergepermaculture.ca or adaptivehabitat.ca. We teach permaculture design courses where we talk all about resilient homes, acreages and farms, as well as we help people get into permaculture based businesses. Um, one of the things you can do is check out all of our grad profiles at vergepermaculture.ca to see some of the different incredible opportunities that our grads are going out and taking advantage of. Hopefully you found this really informative. We'll see you on the next video.